Hello everyone, and let's check out another exciting chess game from the history of chess. And in this chess game, why it is Alexander Petrov and his opponent is Karl Frederick von Yenish. Von Yenish was a mayor in the Russian army, and he also wrote a chess book about chess openings. And he even quit the Russian army for concentrating on this task full time. That was one of the first known works about the chess openings. And this game was played in St. Petersburg in 1844. And let's check out how this game went on. Alexander Petrov starts the game with playing e4, e5, knight to f3, and knight to f6 by Yenish. Playing the Petrov defense against Alexander Petrov, the inventor of the Petrov defense. The game continued. Petrov played d4. Knight takes on e4. Bishop to d3. d5. And finally capturing the pawn. Knight takes on e5. Bishop to d6. After bishop to d6, both players castled. c4. f5. Consolidating. f4. c6. Bishop to e3. Bishop to e6. C takes on d5, C takes on d5, Knight to c3, Knight to c6, Rook to c1, Rook to f6 by Yenish, lifting the Rook. And in this position, Alexander Petrov captured the Knight, Bishop takes on e4, and of course, we have f takes on e4. Well, this is a very basic problem, and you already know that, if d takes on e4, then d5, forking the pieces. If knight takes on e5, then f takes on e5. And black is in trouble. So, in the real game, after bishop takes on e4, we have f takes on e4, and knight to b5, not defending the bishop, and exchanging the knight for the bishop, g4, g6. Preparing to face f5, but Petrov played f5. Sacrificing a pawn. G takes on f5. A very aggressive kingside attack by Petrov. And bishop to g5 by Alexander Petrov. Not capturing back. Defending the rook. Attacking. And defending again. Queen to d2. And exchanging the rooks. Rook takes on c1. But Alexander Petrov didn't capture the rook. He played queen to g5. That's check, blocking. And maybe in this position, Yenish was expecting that rook takes rook is possible. That was the possibility. But Alexander Petrov made a surprising move. He didn't capture the rook. What would you do in this position when Alexander Petrov didn't capture the rook? This is the key moment in this chess game. This is the climax. Alexander Petrov captured the knight. Knight takes on g6 by Petrov. And Yenish happily captured the rook. Rook takes on f1. King takes on f1. And queen to d8. If capturing the knight, then queen takes on g6. And black is getting checkmated. There is no defense. So after king takes on f1, we have queen to d8. Offering to exchange the queens, but Petrov played knight to e7, that's check, king to f7, and queen to h5, that's check, king takes on e7, and bishop to g5, by Petrov, and Yenich resigns, because he is losing the queen at the game. After queen to h5, what happens if king to f6? Then black is amazingly getting force checkmated. This is what Petrov saw in his mind. That was the calculation of Petrov, which is impressive for his time. Bishop to g5, check. King to g7, queen to h6, check. King to f7, queen to f6, king to e8, and capturing the bishop. And how to defend now? If queen to b6, then knight to c6, check. Where is the king going? King to f8, and bishop to h6, check. Mate. 
there is no defense, as you can see. So in the real game, we have queen to h5, king takes on e7, and bishop to g5. And Karl Frederick von Jenich resigned. Let me show you the possible continuation. Moving the king, and bishop takes queen. Rook takes on d8, and queen takes on h7. Well, actually, black could continue to play the game. But white is winning, and white is better. Bishop to g5 is the last move of this exciting chess game by Petrov. And thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Take care, and bye-bye.